Hello and welcome to this fourth video in my series on building apps with Let Element. So far in this series, we've built a to-do application that uses Redux for state management. In this video, we are going to introduce another view to our application so that we can navigate between two different views and we are going to see how we can use code splitting to make sure that we only load the amount of code that we need for any given view. Let's get started. For this, I will install two new dependencies. I will install the Vaadin router and Vaadin charts. Vaadin charts is a commercial tool from Vaadin. It has a uh, free 30-day trial if you want to use it. If you prefer not to use it, that's okay as well. In that case, instead of uh, displaying the chart in the other view, you can just display some text content instead. All right, so we have those installed. Uh, let's go into our index.html first and add some links for navigation. I'll add a couple of links here. So our empty route will go to our to-dos view and then we'll add another link to a stats view. We'll go into our index file here and set up the routing. So when I start here, what I usually like to do is add a listener for the load event on window. So we'll just add an event listener for the load event, and then in here we'll actually do our work. Doing this will allow the browser to render the uh, static HTML part of our application before we start to do anything too heavy uh, in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, JavaScript. So we'll call a method init router. Then we'll implement the init router function. and create a new router object, a new router. And this will take in uh, a reference to a DOM node where we should render the actual view. So here we can do a document query selector for the main section in our template, which is here. So we can go ahead and remove the to-do view and instead let the router populate that in. Okay, so we have the router what we need to do then is call set routes on it. So define how URLs should be mapped to uh, view components. So uh, set routes. And here we'll pass in an array of routes. So in this case, we have three routes. We have the empty route that will display the to do view component. We have a stats view. Uh, or a stats path, which will show the stats view component. Here I've defined an action, which will do a dynamic import for the stats view component JavaScript file. And only after that will we navigate to it. Doing this dynamic import will allow our Webpack configuration to split this view and all of its dependencies into a separate code bundle that will only get downloaded if we actually navigate to this view. Finally, we define a fallback view, just essentially a, a catch-all route, which will display a not found view. And again, we do the same dynamic import here. One thing to note here is that I've specified this Webpack chunk name uh, magic comment here. And this is something that you can use if you want to give your uh, split out code bundles specific names so it's easier for you to see, see which bundle is which one in your network. Uh, status bar in your in your dev tools all right so we'll save those uh, we need to actually include the route or import the router here so I'll just import router from bot in router like so all right one thing to note when we are doing routing on the client side is that you need to configure your server so that it always returns the index page for any routes that it can't resolve on its own because these routes will not exist on the server itself. They're something that we need to navigate to on our, uh, in our client-side application. So in our Webpack configuration, I've already configured it to fall back on index. Uh, in the text version of the tutorial, there's a link to some documentation that you can use to set up whatever web server you are, you are using. All right, so now that we have the navigation kind of infrastructure in place, we can go ahead and start implementing the views. 
Now, if you remember in the second video, we added this create render root uh, override in our to do view in order to have the template being rendered into the light DOM instead of into a shadow root. Now that we have more than one view, I would like to extract this into a component of its own. So in our views folder here, we will create a new file called base view. And in the base view, we will create a new class, base view that extends from lit element. And here we update, uh, override this create render root. So I'll import lit element from Polymer lit element like that. And then what we can do in our to-do view, since we removed the code from here, we will have this extend base view. Oh, that's not going to work because I did not export this. So we'll export that and we'll go in here, base view. Yep, there it is. So now we're extending from, from base view. So let's look at the uh, views that we have. Stats views will be the, the kind of bigger, more meaningful view, but we'll start with just creating the not found view so we can see what the general pattern for that will be. So we'll create a new file for this, just again, keeping the same naming convention. So uh, the view name will be the tag name plus JS. Here we'll define our class. and we will extend from the base view. We'll go ahead and import these. So import base view from base view. And here, really, the only thing we need to do is return a template with some meaningful message. So we'll override the render method return the HTML tag template literal here. And in here, we can just, let's just, let's do just a H1 saying not found. Not super helpful, but it gets the job done. And then we'll call the uh, custom elements registry, call define, define the not found View tag name should map to not found view class. So now we have a view that should catch all the kind of invalid navigations. Let's go into our browser and see that it works. So let's try to navigate to something that doesn't work. And we do get the not found fallback here. All right, very good. So the next thing and the final view that we want to add is a view for stats. So we'll add a new file here, stats view.js. This view will show a pie chart uh, showing stats on completed versus active to-dos. Here we'll create a class stats view and extend from the base view. Then we want to remember to register this so we will call custom elements that define define that stats view tag should map to this stats view component. In this view, we're interested in getting notified when the state changes. So the very same thing as we did here in the to-do view, we want to connect to the store. So we will call connect, connect to the store, and then we'll pass in the base view to that. Here we need to import both uh, store and connect. All right. so. In our stats view, let's begin by defining the properties again with a static getter. And here we return an object that defines the properties on it. The only property that I'll define here is a chart configuration object, and this will have a type of object. Then we have this, since we've connected to the store, we have the callback state changed. That gets in the updated state. And in here, we want to get the stats. Now, we could calculate the state uh, stats in here every time, but what I want to do instead is 
the same thing as we did for the to-do view for the visible to-dos. I want to create a selector so that we only calculate the stats if there's something that actually affects them. So let's go into the reducer here underneath the visible to-do selector. We'll create a new selector called stats selector. And this uses the same create selector function from reselect. For calculating the stats, all we need to uh, pass in is the get to do selector. So in this case, we're not interested in the filters, which means that the last argument here will only get in the to do's. And in this function, what we need to return is a object containing stats. So we'll create an object that contains the number of completed versus the number of active to do's. We'll start by calculating how many completed to do's we have. And then we'll uh, return an object which will have the completed and then we can calculate the active basically that's all the to-dos minus the completed to-dos like that all right so we'll go back into our stats view here and use it so we'll get the stats by calling this stats selector. Make sure that it gets auto -im imported here and the stats selector takes in the state to pr produce that. Once we have the stats we want to do uh, essentially two things. We want to update this chart config and then we want to save a boolean uh, containing whether or not we actually have any to do's at all. So this the uh, chart configuration. This is going to be a voting chart configuration object. It will have two objects. The first one will have the name of completed and it will have the y value of stats.completed. The second one will be the active ones like that. The other thing that we want to save is just an information if we have to do's or not, that would be equal to state dot to do's dot length is more than zero. All right, so now we have the data model pretty much down. The next thing we want to do is define the template. So we'll up, uh, create a render function. In the render function, we return an HTML template. Here, I'll first define a style tag just to to define some styles. In this case I'll just set for the stats view, update the view, or sorry, the display type to block. And what I want to do then is call this dot uh, get chart. So here I'm essentially splitting out the chart into a method of its own. Uh, I do this partly because of clarity and partly because I want to add a little if statement there. So if we have to do's, we want to sh show the chart. If not, we're going to show some fallback content. So we'll create get chart here. And in there, we'll check if this dot has to do's. Then we'll return an HTML template that includes the chart itself. So we'll use the bottom chart. Now that we included a new component here, we want to make sure that we also import it. So we'll include bot in charts here. All right, so that's if we have to do's else, we'll return an HTML template with some fallback content. So we can do something like just a paragraph tag with nothing to do. Maybe add a emoji there. There we go. All right. Um, one thing that I just realized that I didn't include or import already is the HTML helper here. So I'll just import that from lit. Like that. All right. So let's just quickly review, make sure that we have everything. So we have the properties. We have a way of listening to state changes. Uh, create a chart configuration object based on that. 
whenever that changes, our render method gets called. There we call get chart, which checks if we have to do's. If we do, we create a VOD and chart. We create a VOD and chart series. We pass in the chart configuration there. Having the dot here means that we're calling uh, or that we're setting the property, which means that we're passing the actual JavaScript object there. We're not serializing it or anything like that. All right, so let's go into our browser and see if this works. So we're still... All right, looks like we've broke something here. Let's see what's going on here. Create select is not... Okay, so let's see, we probably... All right, so yeah, selector is what we wanted to call here. Makes sense. All right, works better. Go to stats here. Base view is not defined. That means that we... Probably forgot to include the base view. Yep. So import base view from All right, let's see if third time's the charm. Yes. All right, so we have nothing to do because we have no to do's. So we'll add one, two, three, select one of them, go back to stats, and now we get a chart showing us the uh, proportion of completed versus active to do's. Very nice. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do here is do code splitting based on these views. We already configured that here in our route configuration. So by using these dynamic imports, we're already sp splitting the code. Uh, just to give you an idea of what that actually means, let's open up our console here. I will close the running dev server and instead we'll run npm run prod. So this will run a production build and we can actually see what's getting output here and then we'll serve that instead of the development build. This takes a little bit longer because we're doing a little bit more optimizations on it. And what we can see here is that we have these different bundles. So we have a not found view bundle. We have a main bundle here. We have a stats bundle, so it's using these names that we defined here. So if we go into our browser and, or actually, sorry, if we first go into our dist folder and then we serve this using some HTTP server that you might have. In my case, I'm using the serve npm server. I'll uh, open this in our browser. Should look the same. If we open up the network tab here and go to stats, what we should see is that it actually deferred the loading of the, these JavaScript files until we actually needed them. So this means that if somebody is not interested in our, in our stats view at all, they never incur the cost of using, using that functionality. So that's something that's very kind of a, a simple yet very effective way for you to kind of minimize the performance impact of bringing in new features into your application by splitting things uh, by view. All right. So that takes care of the fourth video in our series. In the final video here, what I want to cover is PWAs and off handling offline situations. So be sure to check that out.